Are you guys ready to make a very cool ocean board? Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to Part-Time Table Topper. My name is Adam and I have a very cool project for you guys this week. So I love looking at terrain pieces that people make that have boats, docks, uh, basically anything ocean or shore related, but I haven't actually made anything like that for myself. Most of my stuff is like swamp, jungle, grassland, all the normal stuff. And I wanted to make an ocean board. Luckily, somebody asked me to make one, and that was a great excuse for me to make not one for them, but also for myself as well. And so what we are going to be making this week is this. It is a two foot by two foot, two foot by two foot deep sea ocean board. It's actually very easy to make. I know I say that at the beginning of most of my projects, but honestly, this is going to be a pretty short tutorial because as long as you have the right materials, most of the product does the work for you and you get something that looks like this. Without further ado, let's get to crafting. So to get started, we're going to need some wood glue, some plywood, and one inch thick XPS foam. So first, let's take some wood glue and pour it onto this two foot by two foot piece of plywood. Now take that two foot by two foot piece of one inch XPS foam and really press it down and make sure it gets on there. Even out all the edges to make sure that the wood isn't overhanging on the bottom. Then take some weights and let it dry overnight. Before I go on and make the rest of this board, I want to tell you why I put my board on one inch thick foam on top of that plywood. I've been doing this for about a year now, and if you've watched my channel, you've seen that I've made a couple different wargaming boards or board terrain pieces. In that time period, whether it has been on YouTube or on Instagram or Facebook, if I'm sharing the project there, I've had a, not a lot, but a number of different commenters say, hey, why are you doing that? Don't you know you could use thinner foam for cheaper? Isn't it unnecessary to use the foam? Don't you know you could put it just onto the plywood or onto MDF board or onto cardboard, right? There's a lot of different ways to make this terrain. And I'll start by saying all of those methods are totally valid. This is just my preferred method. You should do it the way you want to do it to your budget and to your taste and your preference. With that said, let me tell you the reason why I put it on one inch thick foam. First and foremost, I just like the cosmetics of it. I think it looks cool. I like my display boards and my display pieces, and I'll use this one that I made here a while back as my example. I think having that painted sleek black edge and a little bit of elevation off the table just makes the piece look more professional. Do you have to do that? No, you don't have to do any of this. If you don't want to, you could just use grid paper if you want to make a map that way or draw it out. I'm of the mindset where if I'm going to be making a cool looking terrain piece to immerse and wow my table, I'm going to go a little bit further to make it look professional. It's minimal work and it's a couple dollars and I think the result just gives you a better looking product. Another thing that I like about this is that it's uniform. This one inch thick XPS foam is very readily available in project panels, those two by two panels at a ton of different hardware stores. So if I'm making a tutorial per, for people, it's very easy for them to get their hands on it. And the one inch thickness here also makes this uniform. So if I want to take a couple different boards and line them up or make multiple terrain pieces, it just makes it easy that I know the levels are going to match up and be the same. Now, like I said, is that also true for half inch thick, quarter inch thick dollar store foam? Yes, but my personal preference, preference is the one inch because I just think it looks better. So those are the reasons I make my boards like this the way I do, but do whatever works for your budget and just know that what I do or any other crafter does isn't law. You just experiment and do what works for you. So with that said, let's get on and make the rest of this board.
To get started on the painting, we're going to use some black paint as an undercoat, and then top that with a darker navy blue and a light blue. The exact colors are irrelevant just as long as you get the look you want, and then some Mod Podge to seal. Now, I'll admit, I don't know if Mod Podge was really necessary for this particular project, but I do know that I didn't have enough of that blue paint to cover the surface, so I just used it as a medium, added a little bit of black paint in to contrast that white, and then used it to paint the entire board. I approached it from the standpoint of, it couldn't hurt. That I've got that blue coat down, it's time to mix in some of that lighter blue. You can see that I'm just very lightly waving it in and using back and forth wavy motions with the brush to make it look like water, and I'm just going to try to create a gradient in all directions, not going any particular way, just to try and resemble the reflection that water might have. Now here comes the fun part, making our water. We're going to need some blue mica powder to mix in with our resin and give it a blue shimmering effect. We're going to use art resin specifically for the resin just because unlike regular epoxy resin, this stuff doesn't create toxic fumes and it's safe to use indoors. Obviously read their description, but I use it because I do all my projects inside. Then finally some Vallejo water effects. Oh, and we're also going to need some resin tape. You can find this stuff on Amazon and it works like a miracle. If you've seen any of my other crafting videos where I do a resin pour, you've seen me use this stuff. Basically, you need to make sure the edges of your board are completely flat. Even if that means sanding or cutting, doing whatever you need to do to make sure the edges are smooth. That's me pinching the corner just to make sure I get a nice even edge. Then, you're going to see I've wrapped it all the way around the entire board and it's going to seal perfectly when we pour our resin. So speaking of the resin, let's get started on that. Like I said before, I'm using art resin specifically because it's safe to use indoors. It's a two-part resin, and like most two-part resins, you're going to do an equal part of the resin and the hardener and then mix them together. Now we're going to mix in that mica powder. Less is more when it comes to this stuff, but you're going to mix that through, kind of chop it up and down, and make sure it blends in really well with the resin. You'll see here that I still didn't use enough. Oop, that'll do it. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and make sure that that's well and thoroughly mixed. Once it is mixed, it's going to have a beautiful consistency and color with a little bit of a shimmer. Now we're going to pour it over the board very slowly, even though I'm speeding this up, and we're going to spread that around the board too to make sure we get a nice even coat. As I finish spreading this out, you can really start to see how that resin with the mica powder works. It has a blue richness that it adds into the resin, but it also allows you to still see underneath. In the close-up here, you can see how much of a shimmer that gives. 
After about 24 hours, when that resin is fully cured and hardened, we are gonna take some Vallejo water texture and spread it all the way over the board. Now looking at this, that is not how I want my waves to look. So I take a paintbrush and I start doing kind of like a stipple or a dab all the way around making random waves. You can see I'm doing rows, but they're not really going in any particular direction because you know, ocean waves don't have giant long lines of waves. There's lots of different patterns of waves depending on how the wind is going that are all kind of merging and blending together. Now, as uh, bad as this next part looks, what I'm doing is I'm taking a straw and blowing on the waves to give them a little bit of a ripple effect. If you have an airbrush, I highly recommend going that route. Look how incredible that ends up looking when it dries. Here, I'm just peeling off the resin tape because I don't need it anymore. I do recommend that you try to do this slowly and gently because I ended up peeling off a little bit of the resin and the water effect, and I'm gonna have to go back and touch it up. Now, I also took a knife and just took it all along the edge to get any of the excess uh, water effects that had seemed to pool up against the tape just to give it more of a smooth look. Now here I am taking those water effects where I had touched up the paint and just dabbing that on top to have a similar effect as the resin, and it's going to cover up those spots that got peeled off. And finally, I'm just going to paint all the edges of this board black to give it a nice, clean finished look. And that's it. That's all it takes to make this really cool ocean board. Like I said at the beginning, if you have the right materials and the, I guess, the patience to go through all of the drying times, you can get something that looks awesome like this for all of your seafaring adventures. I'm super excited to see what other terrain pieces you can put on top of this. I'm thinking portable little islands or like a docks district that you can set on top. You know, one of the things with this that was very important to me was to make sure that it was flat. Even though there's these waves on here, I have seen so many different terrain pieces made where they have these very cool ocean displays from these YouTube and Instagram crafters. And from a diorama standpoint, that's awesome, but a lot of them are not super functional for gaming. So it was important to me to make sure that this was flat enough to put your terrain pieces on, to put your monsters on, to put your ships, your docks, whatever you wanna put on top of it and make it a multifunctional board with a very cool look. So like I said before, guys, please like this video if you found it helpful, just because it helps other people find it as well. And if you guys want to keep up with the rest of the tutorials I make in the future, hit the subscribe button. And I try to put one of these out about once every one or two months. If it's a really good month, I'll do it twice a month. Uh, but we'll see. So either way, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting, guys. Bye.